The standard algorithms are great, but they are also incomplete. The standard can't possibly cover every operation you'd ever want to do on a range of elements. Luckily, we can always create our own algorithms in the style of the standard ones. Many large C++ projects will end up with a small library of their own generic algorithms for use throughout their code. We won't cover all of the important nuances and gotchas of writing generic algorithms in this video. I just want to give you a taste of what it's like to write your own simple algorithm. In our card example from the last video, there was one spot where we had to use a raw for loop because there just isn't a standard algorithm that does what we wanted to do. This was in our generate deck function, where we wanted to combine our arrays of card suits and values to build the final complete deck of cards. We needed to create a card for each combination of suit and value, so we ended up wrapping a call to transform in a loop. To replace this with our own algorithm, we need to figure out exactly what this algorithm should do. Generically, this algorithm needs two input ranges, an output range, and a callable operation. For each combination of elements in the two input ranges, we need to call the operation and store the return value in the output range. We'll call this algorithm outer product, since it's pretty much implementing that math operation from linear algebra. And here's what outer product looks like in C++. Our two input ranges come in as pairs of iterators. First one, last one, and first two, last two. The output range is given as a single iterator to the start of that range, which we'll call D first for destination first. We're assuming that the output range here has the necessary capacity to hold the number of elements this will generate. And our final parameter is the operation for combining the two elements. Note we're using templates for pretty much everything here. We want to work generically with any types of iterators and callable objects. Using templates gives us this flexibility. Within the body of the function, we have two nested loops using the input iterators to iterate over each range. The outer loop iterates over the first input range, taking the first one iterator from its starting value all the way up to when it equals last one. The inner loop covers the second range. We have to create a new variable to hold our current iterator for the second input range, because we'll be making multiple passes over that range. Using this new current iterator variable lets us preserve first two, so we can restart at the start of that range in the next iteration of the outer loop. In the inner loop, we call op with our two input values and store the output into our output range. Then we'll increment the output iterator, increment our current iterator for range two, and repeat. This is our generic way of expressing the outer product behavior we drew out in the slides. For each element in the first range, we'll iterate over every element in the second range. For each combination, we call op and store the result in the output range. Now, down in the generate deck function, we've replaced our loop with a call to outer product. Our first input range is the array of suits. The second is the array of values. Our output range is a back inserter into our deck variable, and our operation is this new lambda called build card. Build card, defined up here, simply takes in a suit and a value as an integer, and then returns a new card holding that suit and value. Now that we have outer product as a vocabulary algorithm in our code base, when another developer comes along, they don't have to spend any time looking at a for loop and trying to process exactly what it's doing. Even for a simple for loop, that leaves room for errors. Now they can see outer product, and they immediately know the general structure of what that call is doing. Then they can start answering specific questions. What inputs does this algorithm take? Well, we know that it's going to take these two ranges. Where is it storing its output? Well, we know that that's going to be in this range. And what operation is it doing as it walks through these two arrays? Well, that's going to be covered by build card. In addition to saving us from potentially making common mistakes, Structuring our code around algorithms makes it easier for other developers to answer these kinds of simple questions about what our code is doing. And with that, we've written and used our own custom algorithm. It's okay if you're staring at this code and it's not making much sense to you. This is definitely intermediate level C++, and some of you have only been doing this for a few weeks now. I encourage you to play with this example a bit. Sit with the code a while, maybe sketch out on paper how the iterators are moving around. There's a link in the description to open this up in Compiler Explorer, so you can edit and run this example however you like. You can also take the opportunity to play with some of the other standard algorithms to see what they do with a deck of cards. 
And with that, we've reached the end of our C++ videos. While there's always more to learn about C++, I hope these videos have helped you become more comfortable working in the language. If you're wondering where to go next to learn more, I recommend checking out the recorded talks available from conferences like CppCon and C++ Now. Thanks for watching.